Hello, hello, my dear sewing friends. All right, I finally got the box from the post office, and today we're going to be filling up this box to the rim with beautiful dresses for Project Dress a Girl around the world. Now, you might be saying, wait a second, didn't I see you make dresses for this project like a couple of weeks ago? And you're absolutely right. I did make four dresses for older teenage girls, so I still have to tidy up some of the threads here and there, but basically these are ready to go. And I also got this beautiful cotton, oh, there's a lot of it, like five yards, so take a look beautiful cotton fabric and I'm going to squeeze out as many little toddler dresses out of this yardage as I can. Yes, I do have a free sewing pattern for a little toddler dress if you would like to participate. So without any further ado, let's get started. First, you will need to print out the pattern and the free pattern for this year's dress and last year's dress will be linked in the info box below underneath this video. So definitely take a look there and enjoy these patterns for yourself or if you would like to make these for this charity. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. And by the way, this is the prototype of the dress that we're going to be making today. You've seen this from one of my upcycle videos. I made this from a shirt and this one is for my little baby girl. And she absolutely loves it. The pockets are great. The fit is good. You can move around with it, play, jump, run, all the things the toddlers do. So I thought this is going to be perfect. As always, we have a little test square over here that measures one inch by one inch. And we also have the margins over here as well. Very easy to put this together. So first of all, we're gonna put the top and the bottom together. You see little triangles over here that need to match. The pattern is also front and back two in one, so this makes it really easy as well. And then we have this piece right over here that has two pattern pieces. This is going to be the bad bottom and this is going to be the side of it. So let's go ahead and cut these out. So the wide one, the large one, is going to be the bottom and it's going to align with the rest of the pattern piece like this, there we go. And this is going to be the continuation of the side and the pocket and that is going to align right over here like so. So let's go ahead and put this one first. And then the bottom. Almost done. Now we need to go ahead and add seam allowances. We're going to add seam allowance to the side seam and hem allowance to the bottom. We don't need to add any seam allowances to the front or back neckline or the armhole because this is going to be all finished uh, by the bias tape. So over here, I'm going to add 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. You can add whatever seam allowance you would like. So let's go ahead and get that done. And this is just a straight line. Awesome. And now I will add half an inch hem allowance on the bottom. Half an inch because I'm going to be folding it twice, quarter of an inch each time. For the pocket bag, I will also add 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance right over here, but I don't need to add any here because this is also going to be finished with a bias tape. Gray line is going to be the same for the pocket as the center front or center back of the garment. So I'm gonna take a ruler and do a parallel line right over here. That way I know this is grain line. All right, let's sort out the pattern pieces. You will copy the pocket twice. Once where the side seam is solid, like you see right over here, and one where you do have the cutout to match the front pattern piece, like you see right over here. So we have two pocket pieces, that's great. And because I am going to be cutting all of these in bulk, I did copy the back pattern piece as a separate pattern piece. So here, if you remember, we had the front and the back. Let me put this one on top of another so you can see the difference. There we go. Everything else is exactly the same except for the side seam. So for the back, this is going to be a solid side seam. There's not going to be the pocket and the back pattern piece. And of course, the neckline is going to be uh, higher as well. Everything else is exactly the same. So I did copy mine on a separate piece because again, I'm going to be cutting this out 
in bulk. I already washed my fabric once because cotton does shrink and uh, I'm going to wash all of the dresses one more time before they're being sent off because right now I'm going to be working on the floor because that's the largest area where I can lay all of this flat and maximize the amount of yardage that I have. I should have not gotten a directional print. So <laughs> if you want to make the most out of your fabric, in any case, don't get a repeat pattern and also don't get a directional print because that always makes things more difficult. Like in this case, all of the flamingos and all of the flowers are facing one way, um, but it's okay. I can still figure this out. So my initial thought was to do this very schematically kind of like, fold both ends to the middle, cut the front, cut the back. There isn't enough width to cut both the front and the back and I would nest them upside down. But again, this is a directional print so I can't really do that. So right now I'm actually thinking I'm going to cut them one by one and I'll see if I can use the negative space in order to cut the front pattern pieces. And I think that is how it's going to all come together. Now, this is what I mean by negative space. I just cut out two of the back pattern pieces and you can see the cutouts right over here. I'm going to remove this piece and now I'm going to open this up and I'm going to use this wider part as a negative space for the front pattern piece. So basically, here was one back pattern piece, here's another back pattern piece, and I'm nesting the front pattern piece kind of like in this wider part in between. So I'm going to place it like that. And this piece right over here is going to be where, let's take a look, where the pocket is gonna go. Oh, that's perfect. It's so bizarre, I have to constantly remind myself not to cut seam allowances because as you know, I usually draft my patterns without seam allowances and then I add them as I cut my fabric. So right now I just have to constantly actively remind myself just cut along the pattern, just cut along the pattern, but it definitely helps when you're cutting a lot of pieces at the same time. Okay, we're moving in the right direction, but it's so cold here, I gotta have a little tea break and then I will be able to wrap everything up. Okay, so I managed to cut out six dresses out of the whole yardage, which is great, and almost all of the pockets. So the pockets aren't small, so that definitely took uh, quite a good amount of fabric. And I'm missing three of these pocket bags. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna grab larger remnants that I have left over, and I'm going to piece them together, and then I'm just going to make sure that I will top stitch the seam and secure it, so that way it's durable. And this pocket bag is going to be on the inside so it's not going to be visible but we'll make it work and I was also hoping to get some amount of bias tape cut from this yardage but I literally had not much left so uh, there might be enough bias tape for like the neckline the front and the back but the rest of it I'll need to figure out Now, the assembly is going to be really straightforward. First, I'm going to go ahead and press these little pieces of bias tape and I'm going to apply them to the front and back necklines of all of the dress pieces. Uh, so that way we can take care of them while everything else is flat. Bias tapes are cut, so now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the back pattern pieces and the front pattern pieces, and I'm going to attach these bias tapes, starting with the wrong side of the garment. I'm gonna go ahead, take one, place it on the edge, open it up, and we're going to stitch right into that crease of the bias tape all the way up to here. There we go. Now we're going to turn it to the right side, take the bias tape, 
fold it over that stitching line. If you need, you can tidy up the seam allowance a little bit if needed. And we'll go ahead and stitch on the very edge of the bias tape. This is the wrong side, this is the right side. And we're going to repeat that on all front and back pattern pieces over here on the neckline. So for this next step, here's my front pattern piece. Here's the neckline that we finished with the bias tape. And here are the cutouts for the pockets. I have two pocket pieces, the one that also has the same cutout and the one that is solid on the side seam. So we wanna wanna take the one that has the cutout and we want to place them wrong sides together like so. We want to go ahead and stitch along this cutout and then we want to finish it with a bias tape the same way as we did for the neckline. And I actually have a full video tutorial on how to draft these pockets and how to assemble these pockets as well. So if you need further reference, I will leave it in the info box right underneath this video. Now here I'm actually going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take the pockets. I will align it but I will also go ahead and grab the bias tape at the same time. Here it is. And I will actually sew it all in one sandwich. So I will attach the pocket and the bias tape all at once. So once you have attached the bias tape to the opening of the pocket, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to take the other pocket bag detail and we're going to place it on top and we're going to pin around over here and that's how we're going to sew it as well with a straight stitch first and then we're going to finish the edges. And here, just going to make sure that you're actually sewing the pocket bag and nothing else in that sandwich. Once this is done, you can see right over here, this is how the pocket bag looks like. And this is the other side. It has a seam over here just because the, this one has been pieced from two different pieces. As you remember, I didn't have enough fabric. And once that is done, you can go ahead and just place the front pattern piece and the back pattern piece right sides together and sew them at the side seam on one side and on the other side as well. And for that, just a straight stitch and then finish up the seam with a choice of your finishing technique. And for me, that's going to be doing that with a serger. So my bobbin just ran out and it's getting close to midnight here. So I'm gonna wrap it up for the evening and tomorrow is gonna be day number two. So for day number two, I have to finish up more side seams, more hems, uh, more actual ties of the neckline. And uh, it's already past 5 p.m. So I really want to ship this off tomorrow. So I have a lot of things to do. So um, I have to move it, move it. <laughs> ah, not funny. Okay. So once you have completed both of the pockets, side seams, the front and the back neckline, it is time to attach bias tapes to the armhole, which are also going to form the ties. And that's how you're going to secure the dress on the body. Here, the measurements for the bias tapes you're going to find on the front page of the pattern. So basically you need to make them long enough in order to be able to tie them. And we're going to start by attaching this bias tape to the wrong side of the garment, just like we did before with 
with a front and back neckline. So you're gonna take your dress, you're going to lay it down like this, you're gonna take your piece of bias tape and you're going to attach it to the wrong side of the garment first. So here you can see I have already done that. There we go, it's really easy and straightforward. If you happen to have a spot like this, where this little part right over here is peeking out, it's all right, just go ahead and angle your bias tape because you will be tidying up the spot anyway. I do prefer for this to be a little bit wider than needed so that way it doesn't fray as much and if it does, you still have a little bit of extra fabric to work with and you're not losing any, so that's totally fine. So let's go ahead and tidy up all of the bias tape seam allowance from all of these little things that are sticking out and then we're gonna fold it over and finish the ties and the bias tape on the right side of the fabric all in one go. You're gonna start by folding one of the ends of the bias tape. You can see the creases first you fold it like this and then just like on a regular bias tape you bring in the ends and then you fold it in one more time. You will continue folding it together like a bias tape and pinning it until you reach the point when you have met the neckline of your garment and here it will seamlessly transition into a regular bias tape around the neckline just like we did with the front and the back over here. And you're going to continue stitching on the edge of the bias tape and once you reach the other side you're going to go ahead and do exactly the same thing as here and finish it up as a tie as well. So you're going to do it all in one go. going to do a double fold hem. Each fold will be quarter of an inch. You can fold it in once and then do a stitch and fold it in one more time and then do a stitch again. But I'm just going to go ahead and actually fold it twice right away so that way I can save a little bit of time on this. Okay, it's uh, close to midnight again, so I'm gonna wrap it up for the evening and day number three tomorrow. Okay, it's all done, finally. Day number three, gotta pack the package. This box actually turned out to be a little bit bigger than I thought, so I would need to get a smaller box. But let's go ahead and take a look at all of the dresses that I'm going to be sending off to Mari. And Mari is the mastermind behind activating the sewing community for this wonderful good cause. So if you wanna help, if you wanna get involved, if you want to know more details, I will leave the link to her original video where she talks about how to participate, what to make, what are the materials, what are the instructions that you need to adhere to and things like that. Uh, if you wanna send it to your local ambassador instead of sending to Mari, if you want to purchase the labels that need to go on top of the dresses, dress a girl label, all of that will be in her original video. So I will leave the link for that for you guys in the info box below. And Mari, you're awesome. This is super great, especially when all of us come together for, as I said, this wonderful good cause. So let's take a look. This is for girls who are in their teenage years, so maybe like 17, 18. So one dress is like that. The other one is, I love this print so much. All of them have pockets. This is such a beautiful, youthful, fun, colorful print. I love it. And all of these fabrics are from Hobby Lobby. This one is also pretty romantic, really cute. There we go. And this one, I think this was your favorite, guys, from the video when I was making these. A lot of you said that you absolutely loved this fabric. Super cute, right? Okay, and as for the dresses that we made together, 
I was going to say today, but no, that was like three days ago. So there they are. Look at that. Super cute. I like that you can see that there are pockets, so that way nobody gets confused. So I have six of those. So two and three and four and five and six. So 10 dresses all together. Thank you so much for watching. The link for the free pattern, actually two free patterns, one from last year, one from this year, will be also in the info box below. And if you wanna take a look at last year's Dresser Girl video where I also made a dress, then go ahead and click right over here. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.